Here we go. I also can't see the chat. I will go ahead and handle the chat box. So as you're coming in, everybody, just tell us where you're coming from. Welcome, welcome. You can pop in the chat where you're from, what part of the country or what part of the world you're coming from. Well, say howdy. <laughs> Troy, nice Pewaukee, yeah. Florida, Colorado, Maryland. All right. Vermont. Hi, Julie. Well, we're excited to have you all here. Thanks for being here. Oh, one little thing that we have been having to tell everybody for every one we've been doing. If you want to chat to the whole crowd, please change in the, in the little chat box where it says to, change it to be all panelists and attendees. That way other people can see any questions that are being asked and chat back and forth with you as well. Hi from Elm Grove, Victoria. Nice. <clears throat> just give and everyone. Just so everyone, yeah, just so everyone's aware, we are doing the Zoom webinar feature, so you won't have your photo uh, up at, at the um, in the little box. You're going to just see the panelists' uh, photos, so you don't have to worry about, you know, your camera being on and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Yeah, hopefully you're joining us in your PJs and a glass of wine if you're here on the <laughs> East Coast. <laughs> yes, and if you got your cowboy hats on, remember to take a picture and, and give us a tag. All right, I think we'll give it just, there's still some people coming in, so we'll give it just another minute. Oh, Julie's on board. PJs and bed should <laughs> just finish the wine. Way to go, Julie. That sounds perfect. Oh, and let us know in the chat. Have you ever been to a dude ranch before? Do you know much about ranches across the United States? If you have any pressing questions you want us or the ladies to answer today, uh, let us know. All right. Lori and I were chatting right before everybody came on about our hats and our our horseback riding history. <laughs> yeah. I love your background, Candace. Oh, yeah. You're I don't know if Maria. I can share that with you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I think we can get started. Candace, are you still letting people in? Yeah, there, it looks like uh, it looks like it's slowing down. So I think it's a okay. good time. to. Get, okay, get perfect. Started. Well, welcome everybody. Super excited to have you here today for our Road to Ranches presentation. My name is Angela Isherwood. I'm the owner of Olive and Atlas Travel Design. I am your resident travel advisor from the Wisconsin area. Um, so hopefully you're here either from my meetup group or various other channels, but welcome, happy to have you. I'm here today as always with my fellow colleagues. We have created an eat, drink, travel community across our different states. So I have Maria Stephanopoulos here. She's from Florida and the Tampa Bay area. I have Candace Stern. She's here from Detroit, Michigan. And then not on the call, but people who work very closely with us are Susan Schaefer from Tennessee and then Heidi Thies from Colorado. And all of us have really formed this eat, drink, travel community across the country in our local communities and virtually like this throughout the pandemic to keep the love of travel and, and food and wine and, and just fun alive um, at a time where more people um, are staying home than ever before. 
and um, have, have Candace and Maria to thank for kind of getting this off the road. But many of you, I'm sure, have been with us for many months now, and we appreciate you continuing to tune in, and we hope that we can just continue to bring you some fun and inspiring um, information biweekly at Brown, different places around the world, and that also that you're starting to feel the itch to kind of get back on the road. I think we'll hear a lot today that the tides are turning and there's a momentum in the air. There's a buzz in the air. People are ready to travel. They're ready to see, see new places and really get out there, whether that's in the United States or, or further afield um, where, we can, where we can travel right now. So if that's you, all of us advisors are here to help you plan an amazing vacation um, after the 2020 year that we had. So you know where to find us when you are ready. But without further ado, I'd really like to jump right into our presentation today. I'm super excited. There's so much about ranches in the United States to uncover. And with us today, we have our wonderful partner, Overseas Leisure Group. And we have Lori and Tiffany from, from there who are going to really walk us through what their company does, how we partner together, and how you can experience a ranch vacation. And how different and, and the types of variety there are because it's really not just going horseback riding. There's so many options. So I'm going to kick it over, excuse me, because I didn't play my slides. Um, I will put all of this information about how to contact Maria, Candace, myself, Heidi, and Susan in the chat. And you can always find us on Facebook and in our meetup groups. And again, all of this information will be in the chat. But right now I'm going to kick it over to Lori so she can start with her presentation. Thank you, Angela. Yes, let me uh, put up the presentation here. Thank you so much. We are very, very excited to be presenting this evening. And uh, my name is Lori Kendall and I'm Director of Sales at Overseas Leisure Group. And I, I am accompanied today by my colleague, uh, Tiffany Clemens, who is our ranch expert. So. Welcome to the virtual vacation. Um, this is a, really a theme that's very close to my heart. Uh, I, am a, I am an equestrian. I ride every week. I absolutely love everything horses. And so uh, that's my cowboy hat. And if you have your cowboy hat <clears throat> somewhere hidden in the closet, I hope you've taken it out and are wearing it tonight to get into the mood. And I hope you've uh, grabbed your glass of wine to sit back and enjoy and really hear a little bit about uh, the U.S. ranches. Um, we, I'm delighted to be partnering with Angela, uh, Olive and Atlas, Ingenious Travel, and Stay Balanced Travel, and all of her uh, partner agencies. Uh, Overseas Leisure Group is a luxury travel oper operator that works with uh, solely with travel advisors. Um, and we do have expertise in the U.S. market. Uh, and one of our areas of expertise is U.S. ranches. Um, so U.S. ranches has really changed over the past 15 years. About, gosh, 15 years ago, you didn't have many luxury ranches from coast to coast. And nothing in between. There was really nothing out there. Now there is a huge variety of ranches uh, to choose from. And we really look forward to talking about uh, some of these phenomenal ranch options. And of course, uh, today, um, starting with last summer, ranches were a huge request. And now we are getting uh, quite a bit of demand for US ranches in this uh, period of pandemic where you can be out in the, in the open space and beautiful landscape. Um, so we are gonna talk about the road to ranches and uh, different ranch categories because there are uh, different categories that we feel will assist you in choosing really the right ranch uh, for your expectations of what that ranch experience is gonna be. Um, so we're going to talk about those ranches that we all love and know and then uh, there's some that we should really be thinking more about. They are not necessarily as well known, but they are amazing options. Um, again, the 
American journey is really what we call our, our ranches. Um, there's, again, so many different types of ranches that we're going to be looking at today. Ranches really speak to every travel request. Um, you have, you know, those that are looking for off the grid. It meets that request. Um, nature all around. There's some very intimate ranches. Uh, and it's obviously very easy to distance socially. And then we have quite a few varieties of different ranches from luxury to rustic uh, to historic. Um, but what we did, um, our company decided to, when we really started looking deeply into all of our uh, ranch uh, portfolio, and we have a portfolio of well over 30 ranches, we said, okay, when we, we present these ranches, you know, why should we be presenting just what the amenities are, you know, what the inclusions are. Let's put these ranches into ranch categories that will assist the client and the advisor in uh, to advise their client as to which ranch is really going to meet those expectations based on the guests um, expectations of that ranch experience because there are some uh, there are some clients that want to go to a ranch, but they don't want to get near a horse. They're scared to death of horses. So uh, there's plenty of ranches where, where that there's an option to enjoy that ranch experience and, and see those horses from afar. Um, but again, then you have those, those um, clients that want that true ranch experience with the horses and horseback riding every day. So I'm gonna just briefly talk about these categories. Um, so again, for the love of horses is one of the categories, and that is definitely a ranch where you want that horse experience. Uh, you can go trail riding, they have the horse whispering classes, there is, um, you know, uh, rodeos, uh, different ranching, dude ranching activities. Uh, so we have quite a few that come under that category. So it is the true horse experience. Um, and then you have you have modern cowboy. Modern cowboy is it is um, these these ranches are more intimate. Uh, it's really where luxury takes first row. Um, beautiful, wonderful experiences within that property. However, again, more of an intimate feel, um, and and the majority are luxury tier ranches. And then you have amazing playgrounds, and this is where it's all about the outdoors. These properties are usually located on um, vast acreage uh, with lots of different activities available. Uh, and then you have historic gems. So many ranches that we do have in our portfolio have been built over a hundred years ago. So there's a lot of history behind these ranches and uh, you're really going back in time. Um, but these ranches are exceptional um, locations uh, to visit and to have a true ranch experience. Um, and as we, as Tiffany, who is our ranch expert, um, will be uh, outlining some of the ranches that we're working with, she will highlight which category that ranch comes under. Um, so we're going to start with those ranches that we, we know and love. Um, we're going, to, we, we're going to touch on a ranch at Rock Creek, uh, the resort at Paws Up, uh, the lodge and spa at Brush Creek. And so let's start our journey. And I'm going to hand it over to Tiffany, who's going to uh, give us an overview of the ranches. Tiffany? Hi, everyone. Yes, so I am sure that there will be many of these ranches that I go over that you have heard of and some that you haven't. Um, I'm probably pretty sure that most of you have heard of the ranch at Rock Creek. Um, it is the first ever five star ranch um, listed on Forbes. Um, it was the dream of a child who became a serial entrepreneur and spent over two decades trying to find the perfect valley to put this ranch in. It is um, only 6,000 acres, so it's very small and compact, only has 29 rooms, but it is incredible. Um, you could stay, they have glamping sites there, there's cabins, they have regular lodge rooms, and it's just super unique. Something I love to say is it sits at over 5,200 feet, and at night, all you see is stars. So the stargazing here is absolutely incredible. Um, the activities here, um, it will keep you busy the entire time. They do have a kids club here as well. 
Um, and this is an all-inclusive property. So it will include all of your meals and activities. Um, and there's so much to do even for the children. Um, while you guys are drinking a glass of wine at the bar, the kids could be playing um, in the bowling alley there. Um, and just keep, um, it's just a way to keep everybody busy the entire time. Um, so what we like to do when we send our ranch presentations is also kind of include some insider tips. Um, and one of the things that I like to say here is um, when you arrive into Missoula, which is about an hour and a half from the property, if you're flying commercially, there is a location called Bernie's Bakery. Um, and I always recommend that you stop and have a slice of the pecan pie. I say pecan, some people say pecan, it, all, <laughs> it just depends on the person, but I say pecan. And we actually had a wedding party um, not too long ago that stayed here at this ranch. And instead of the traditional wedding cake, the bride asked to have 50 of the pecan pies delivered to the ranch because it's just the best one of a kind pecan pie you're ever gonna taste. So I always love to recommend those insider tips that you might not know about, but they're things you wanna do and things you wanna see in route or following. And another thing that we like to do um, is pair um, some of our uh, ranch experiences with other destinations. So if you decide you only want to spend four or five nights at Ranch at Rock Creek and you want to go somewhere else in this area, I would recommend um, going into Yellowstone, um, maybe doing the under canvas or the explorer cabins, or you can even go down into Jackson Hole where there's the beautiful Four Seasons, the Amangani, the Hotel Terra, and there's um, immense amount of activities in those areas that you can do. Um, and it's a great way to pair the ranch experience. And then of course, like I mentioned, Missoula is the closest commercial airport. Um, and if you're flying privately, it's Anaconda, about 30 minutes away from the property. And this, that, that property was actually placed in the modern cowboy family. So the next property I wanted to talk to you about sits on over 37,000 acres. There are camps and homes on the property, which makes it an intimate experience. Um, it is the resort at Paws Up. Um, it is one of the only um, ranches that actually allow and accept dogs, um, but it is specific to um, different homes on the property and it does require a deposit, but it is doable. Um, it is one of the, the properties that you could actually stay for the longest period. We actually have clients that will split their stay and do half of their stay in a log home and then half of it in a tent um, on the river. Um, they do have 28 homes and 30 tents in total. Um, activities here are exceptional. Um, they aren't included in the costing of the ranch. They're all a la carte. Um, the fishing here is uh, exceptional. Um, you can have a guide and it can be done from a raft. Um, the culinary and the performing talents here, the guest chefs that come in and singers, make this truly remarkable. And it's also very family friendly as well with another kids um, club and activities um, that they can do on, on property as well for the, the younger children. Um, <clears throat> some of the things that I like to explain is Ranch at Rock Creek and Resort at Paws Up are year round. So it's not just a summer stay, but you can actually go in the winter time and ski. Um, there's sledding for the kids. There's so much to do in any season. So don't just think this is just a summer experience. Um, but just know that staying here, even in the summer, you might experience the four seasons. So it could be warm in the, in the daytime and then go into the 30s at night. So you actually get to experience all four seasons in one day here. Um, and again, there's lots of insider tips that we like to um, add on to the ranch experience um, that will make this truly a unique experience. And then we like to pair this ranch also with either going up into Glacier at the finality of your um, stay at the Paws Up Resort. Um, and you can do the under canvas um, in Glacier. Um, there's the Lodge at Whitefish. There's amazing rafting and hiking um, up in Glacier. Or you could even pair it and go back down into Yellowstone and have a Yellowstone Grand Teton experience. Um, so this is, these are recommendations that we like to include as well for those that don't just want to stay at a ranch, but want to kind of go outside of that realm and do some other things as well. And the third um, one that I wanted to recommend was the Lodge and Spa at Brush Creek Ranch. Um, <clears throat> I like to say that this location is luxury family activities on steroids. It is 
amazing, all of the activities that you can do. It sits on 30,000 acres, um, truly unique with the cabins that they offer. Um, and they give you, if you do stay at these cabins, there are complimentary golf carts that you have that you can tour around the property with. Um, kids were thought of when they made this. Um, it was created with them in mind. Um, kids are constantly coming to us saying how much they've enjoyed their stay um, when they're going back. But for the adults as well, the fly fishing here in the river is very private, very accessible. All of the activities, including the shooting, um, the hunting, um, the horse whispering program that they have on property, all of those are included in the rates as well. Archery is another big one here at this property. Um, they have um, incredible culinary as well here. They have a newly opened farm. Um, they are all organic. They have greenhouse ready um, for the winter seasons. Um, they have a brewery on property, several wine cellars and distilleries, um, and, and the food itself is just a one of a kind of experience as well. Um, and these again are some insider tips that we like to um, share with you of things that you can do and see um, while you're at the Brush Creek Ranch. And then again, we would pair this location um, with Aspen, Telluride, or Dunton Hot Springs. Um, if you're flying commercially, Denver would be the closest. If you're flying privately, it's Laramie. Um, and so we, you again could um, pair this um, if you're only looking for a few nights. Most of these ranches, like I was mentioning earlier to Angela, do not have a minimum night stay, which is great because then you can just do um, three or four days and have that adequate amount of time at the ranch before either pairing it beforehand or after the ranch experience with another destination as well. So the next um, ranches that I wanted to talk about are kind of the ones that aren't as well known as the previous three that I discussed. Um, the first one that I wanted to mention is Lone Mountain Ranch. Um, it is one of the oldest ranches, um, one of the less visited properties. Um, a lot of people do not know of it. It is in the state of Montana. And it was actually the first property to receive electricity in that state. Um, it's very traditional. The staff is truly local. Um, so during your stay at Lone Mountain, you will have one of a kind local guides that can take you into the parks. There's 26 cabins. They were all renovated in 2016, um, located on the river. They have beautiful views. Um, they also have a six bedroom home that can house up to 18 people. Um, but it does, that house does require a five night minimum. All the other um, pieces on property do not. Um, and Lone Mountain Ranch is part of the unique National Geographic Resorts. Um, so that just kind of translates in itself to how close you are to Yellowstone and the incredible experiences that you would have with the local guys that can take you into the parks. Um, and Forbes sums it up well. They said that it is their fascinating stories and devotion to the land that makes them the destination that actually comes to life. And that's very true. Um, and so some of the insider tips here, um, that you guys can do. They have wonderful whitewater rafting outside of this location that can keep your family busy. Um, there is a place to go out into Big Sky nearby and try the delicious pizza at Usul and Spur. Um, and again, these would all come included in the presentation that we can send um, with the ranch uh, experience and what's all included as well. And then um, you're very close and easily accessible to Bozeman. International Airport to the ranch. Um, and then again, you can pair this ranch and go up into Glacier National Park, um, or you can come down into Yellowstone and pair it um, with Jackson Hole and, and Grand Teton National Park. Um, it's very doable to be able to include those places as well into your itinerary. The next property I wanted to talk to you about is Mustang Monument, and I love this one. Um, a <clears throat> hundred years ago, there were over 2 million Mustangs roaming here in the U.S. And today there's less than 28,000. Um, and it took a woman that created this sanctuary and it made it a place to come to life and help preserve these beautiful animals. Um, it is 900 square miles, 576,000 acres. So that's about 14,000 acres per guest. 
they are only open June to September. And keep in mind right now, this year, um, it's buyout only. So it'd be 40 guests max plus children. They have 10 cottages and 10 teepees. Um, and they have king beds that can convert down into two twin beds as well. And they have a seven bedroom home um, for overflow as well. Um, they have ATV driven safaris in the desert, um, breakfast that you can go and feed the Mustangs. Um, there's archery, shooting, roping, paintball. Um, they also have a TP spa, um, but that's not included in the rate, but they do have a spa on property. Um, and I always like to mention that it also has great weather um, over the, the summertime. It can hit 85 degrees in the summer because it is 6,000 feet high. And the evenings you would probably be in the low to mid 60s. Um, but just keep in mind that this is only open uh, during the summer and it would be a buyout only. And then again, we love to pair this one um, with either going into Salt Lake City um, or going into Utah and doing the national parks. There is Moab, um, Bryce Canyon, Zion National Park. Um, there's extreme amounts of activities to keep everyone busy in the national parks after doing Mustang Monument. And if you're flying commercially, Salt Lake City would be the closest airport. And, um, and then there's also an airport nearby if you're flying privately. And then Zapata Ranch. This is for the avid horse rider. So if you have a love for horses, if you're interested in cattle driving, taking lessons, uh, learning about horse programs and um, all that has to do with horses, then this is exactly where you wanna go. It's also for the avid foodie. So if you're a lover of food, um, all of uh, the, the food there is served locally, um, but it is, absolutely incredible. The elk, the free roaming bison, um, the, the clinics that they have here. They What's great here is that even if you're not a true horse lover and you don't really want to be on a horse that much, this ranch is great because it actually does tailor-made itineraries suitable to that individual. So it could be a family of four and one of the children absolutely loves horses and one doesn't like them at all. Um, and that's something that we share with the ranch ahead of time they put together one of a kind programs for each individual tailored to what they want to do. Um, so you don't even have to get on a horse if you don't want to. Um, but it's just an absolutely incredible, incredible ranch. And then Lori, did you wanna summarize um, the end of this? Thank you, Tiffany. Yes, so that was just a small sampling of uh, some of our ranches. Uh, there's just unfortunately too many to be able to talk about. We could go on for hours and hours, but um, here are just a few where we list a few that come under each of the categories uh, that we spoke about. But I recommend uh, contacting the, your, your travel advisor, our partners, uh, Angela and her, and her partners. Uh, and we'd be more than happy uh, to assist and recommend and, and send. We have some wonderful literature on all of these ranches. Um, and again, there's some amazing experiences to be had. Uh, and uh, remember that these ranches, many are open both summer and winter. Uh, so you can think of uh, these experiences for both summer and um, possibly over the festive season as well. Uh, but I'd like to thank everybody for, uh, for attending and uh, look forward to hopefully uh, seeing you out there on a ranch one day. <laughs> Angela? Thank you, Lori and Tiffany. That was great. Um, beautiful pictures. I just have a couple questions that maybe you guys can chat about. The first one is, can you talk a little bit about um, age limits and like if there's any restrictions on how young kids can be to go and, and things for them to do and if they can ride the horses at all the ages, et cetera? Um, it's really dependent on the ranch itself. Um, there's usually not an age limit when it comes to the child being able to go to the ranch. Where you're gonna find that limitation is more when it comes to the riding programs. Um, some of the ranches have pony rides for the younger riders, but when it comes to regular horseback riding, there's gonna be an age limit of six or seven years old to go onto the regular horses. Um, but they do a lot of, of, of the ranches and we always keep this in mind when we know the details of the family profile 
to, to put them with that perfect ranch that if they do have younger kids to look into a ranch that has more of the pony programs, more of the hands-on for the younger kids um, than let's say another property that like Zapata that might be more for the, the avid horse rider that mm-hmm. would be more for the older child. Um, but resort at Paws Up is a great one because there's so many things you can do outside of riding. Um, they do have the kids club to keep people busy um, while their parents go off and ride or do more of the, the grown activities. Uh, Rancho Rock Creek is another one um, that uh, is able to accommodate to the younger kids to keep them busy with different things every day um, so that the parents can go off and do more of the things that the younger ones can't participate in. Thank you. That's awesome. And then can you talk a little bit about what, you know, what the experience is like around Christmas time at some of these ranches? So my go-tos for the winter are Ranch at Rock Creek and Resort at Paws Up. They are um, year round. They're incredible. They have um, more of those uh, winter type experiences. Um, There's the skiing and um, the, the sledding and the snow mobiling, um, and they're close to the national parks so they can go out and explore and do some of those winter activities nearby in, inside of more of like Yellowstone and Glacier. Um, so I, I love these two, um, especially in the winter season because they do have more of those winter type ex- experiences, whereas some of the other ones are more focused more on the summer. So let's say in Moab in Utah, that's a very popular one in the summer. I always love to suggest Sorrel River Ranch because there's a lot of things to do in the summer. But in the winter, yes, you can stay there, but you're more limited. It's colder, but there's not much to do there. Um, so you could stay, but you're not going to have that experience behind it. So that's another thing we keep in, in mind. And when we get the profile, we know, like, are they interested in more of a relax, not really doing much, um, where it really won't matter where they go? Or are they looking to keep the kids um, busy doing skiing lessons or snowboarding or going snowmobiling or going into there's there's snowmobiling inside of Yellowstone, which is really cool or dog sledding. Um, There's just so much to do at those types of properties. So we always like to keep in mind the profile of if they're wanting to be busy the entire time and adventurous or if they're looking to be more laid back, relaxed, you know, just enjoying the atmosphere, but not really wanting to do much. So we have both. It's just really dependent on the profile. Awesome. Thank you. And then I know we talked about this a little bit, Tiffany, and I know this is a hard question, but Catherine's wondering, can you give an example of an average price range? That is tough. Again, it depends on the ranches. Um, So Resort at Paws Up, Ranch at Rock Creek, um, Brush Creek Ranch, those are our more five-end properties. So, you know, you're going to be looking at more of a higher price tag and something like Goosewing Ranch, Sorrel River Ranch in Utah. um, You're probably going to be looking at eleven to fifteen hundred dollars a night, depending on the room type that you get. Um, Resort at Paws Up, it would just it would depend. Um, You could be looking at 10K and over for a five night stay. Um, Again, it's all based on the dates, too. Um, Summertime is big. Maybe in their off season, they're a little bit less. Um, but we have ranches dependent on your budget. Um, Great. And some of them include food, drinks, activities. Some of them just include food. So there's a wide variety, right? Right. And I can, we can share with you guys um, at the conclusion, we have a great document that breaks all of the over 30 ranches that we work with down, not just into their category, but even further that would have more of the starting price point at each ranch. It would have what's included. If it's only accommodation only, or if it includes some of the meals, um, if it includes activities, if it doesn't, what activities would be included, what activities are nearby off property that we could add a la carte. Um, It would give ideas of what you can pair it with, the airports nearby. So that would be a great resource that you can share with everyone um, Mm -hmm. that would give more details to each ranch specifically. Okay, great. Are there any other questions, guys, that came through that I missed? Yeah, I I think you got them all. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies. That was awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, Before we close out, I guess I just want to say we have another virtual event coming up in two weeks. 
this time. It'll be April 27th. We're going to be going to Croatia. We're really, really excited um, for this presentation. So stay tuned for that. And then I think we're, we're announcing a couple more in a couple weeks, right, Candace? Yes. So we're going to be going to Costa Rica after we go to uh, Croatia. So very excited about that. Great. Well, I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you all so much, Lori and Tiffany. Great job. Thank you. And um, we will be sending out the recording to all attendees within the next couple of days. So please stay tuned. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank everybody. you. Hi, everyone. Bye.